Heaven forbid I be honest and truthful about how my life's really going. Is that a reflection on a lack of faith? Is that a reflection on bad decisions? Like, actually, no, this is part of being human. And we don't become Christians and stop being human. And nowhere in, in Scripture do I read about having to be fake positive. Between the Grooves is hosted by James Curtis, music director and morning man in the greater Toronto area on Joy Radio. James Curtis talks to artists and industry insiders to discover the connection between music and faith. You can connect with the show at faithstrongtoday.com slash between the grooves or via Twitter at between grooves. James Curtis, along with Aisha Woods, for episode 226 of Between the Grooves. It's your look at music, ministry, and everything in between with today's top Christian artists. Aisha, you're one of those artists. Uh, Am I really? (laughs) You are. Today we get to chat with Jody from Love and the Outcome. And before we get to that, I just thought it's interesting because she has a young family. Her and Chris uh, have a young family, young kids. You're in the same boat. And, you know, it's interesting Two years ago, I guess it's about two years, a little over two years ago now, Mm -hmm. we entered this thing called a pandemic. Crazy to think that two years has gone by already. Well, and I never thought it would last this long. You know, I'm I'm from the era that, you know, the uh, H1N1 and SARS and everything else. And that was like, I had somebody ask me, how long do you think this thing's going to last? And I think couple of months and it won't right. be the top story in the newscast anymore it'll be buried in the third story the fourth story and then eventually yeah. we just won't hear about it anymore so i think i i think i gave it like six months or something like that just from you- from start to finish okay not realizing that oh by the way there's a new variant oh hey right. there's another variant you know <laughs> and and just the thing going on and on and on and then you know uh-huh. the vaccine and all that talk when it comes to Between the Grooves, I never thought we would be talking pandemic on the podcast, right. right? We're a music and faith type podcast, and yet this has been part of our lives for the last couple of years. How has it affected you guys? I mean, you're an artist, but you're also working in a church, and you've got young kids. Now, you've got the luxury of living in Orlando. <laughs> oh, gosh. You know what? It it has affected every single aspect of our lives, Um from ministry to to business and uh, even with our kids, you know, there was a period where uh, I was at home with them, just having to homeschool our boys and, and do the whole virtual learning. And it was kind of funny, like looking back now, um, I had one boy in the nook at the table, mm-hmm. I had another boy in the formal dining room at the table, and the big boy, I had him at his desk in his bedroom. Hang so, on, hang on, hang on. You said, did you say the former dining room or the formal dining formal. room? Formal. Mm-hmm. Okay, I yes. thought it was. I thought it was the former dining room because that's what my son does he sits at the dining room now and it's like we don't have a dining room table anymore because that's that's where he sits right and and he's kind of taken over you know right right so and you know what for a minute it was our former dining room because it was turned into a classroom right right of sorts but i would be like running from one room to the next and i'm like okay let's uh you have this meeting with this teacher at this time and i'm you know, it was bananas, yeah. but it was also like really the the biggest learning curve for me in my adult life. Mm-hmm. And um, it, there were tough times, but again, just in retrospect, such great times that we had to spend with our family, you know, yeah, yeah. And, and really focusing on what's really important and what really, really matters most. So my last couple of years, a little different because I still went to my job every day. I still had the morning show to do. I had to do things a little differently. You know, obviously, you know, you and I can't be in the same room physically right now. Now, part of the reason is because you're in Orlando and I'm in Toronto. But Mm -hmm. even if you were here, you know, because of restrictions and stuff, we wouldn't have been able to do that anyways. So that was a little different. Learning new technology. Never heard of Zoom until. Zoom. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, all of that. But but the other part of me and and somebody asked me this recently, you know, what was was what was the pandemic like for me? And and for me, it wasn't a whole lot of a change. Like my kids are old 
older, so they could fend for themselves. As long as they had internet, they could figure out the school stuff, and sure, I, could, sure. I could leave them be and stuff. For me, it was everybody's home. Right? Gotcha. We weren't going anywhere. I was still traveling back and forth to work. I was still being the, the taxi cab driver for my kids, dropping them to and from work. I was a little jealous at times. I was a little, a, a little jealous and mad because... Here I was going into work every day, and I'm spending the money on gas, and I'm, I'm traveling and, and whatnot, and I've got people that I work with or people that I know that are uh-huh. w- now working from home, and they're saving themselves hundreds of dollars a month in gas, and I'm thinking, well, I'm not saving anything, right? <laughs> and then they're saving themselves hours and hours of commute time. It's like, I still have the commute time. I don't save my... I, don't, I didn't gain five hours out of this. I'm still... You know the same thing, right? So I was a little, I was a little ticked off. I'll, I'll be, I'll be honest, but it has been difficult, and and uh, it's interesting because for an artist, the last couple of years, an artist and somebody that works in the music industry, because it's not just the artists, sure. it's the, it's the producers, it's the the people that are setting up sound gear at gigs, and and right. all those the lighting people, sound mm-hmm. engineers, all those people have been impacted. How do you make ends meet? Right. Right. Well. I- I, I thank God, gosh, all the time. I thank God that uh, that he has made it possible for me to be able to work at the church mm-hmm. and be able to still do what I love to do and and make a living. And my husband, he's a general contractor, so um, he's been able to continue working as well. There's, and, there's been uh, people... There's been lots of people doing renovations, right? So that's right. great for your husband. Absolutely. Like I know I got people all down my street that was putting up decks and doing this kind oh, of res- putting in new windows, you know, right. redoing the roof and everything else. That's awesome for your husband, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. business yeah, booming a, for him. A yeah. God's a promise keeper, you know, he'll keep us. He's, he's always been a provider and, um, and I, I thank God for that. And it hasn't always been, you know, a walk in the park. It hasn't always been easy. Um, and we've we've seen some tough times, you know, but God is faithful. And um, I, I'm just grateful for every door that he's opened, you know. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking forward to this conversation with Jody from Love and the Outcome because uh, they've had their own stuff happening over the last couple of years not not just the pandemic but uh, their house was flooded about a year ago Uh, they've had other stuff happening in their lives and and so it's difficult you know when you're trying to make ends meet and and you can't even do what your livelihood is and then and then have all of that happen like you know how do you handle it what what is your attitude right and mm-hmm. so uh yeah let's get into this conversation with jody right now jody from love and the outcome on between the grooves She's on with us. That's why I'm asking. Oh, cool. Can, Thanks. Aisha, can you hear Jody? I sure can. How you doing, Jody? Hey, I'm good. How are you? Good. Thanks. Are you guys full time in the music ministry? I know way back when, when you guys started out and you were moving from Canada and living out of your car and then moving down to Nashville and whatnot. Uh, at that time, it was a full time thing. But the times have changed over the last couple of years. There's a lot of people yeah. that are doing other things just to make ends meet. What's it like for you guys? Yeah, it's been hard. Uh, it's a really strange thing to kind of give up everything to follow a dream and then have something like COVID happen and all our families across the border. You know, this is all we can legally do on visas is be musicians. And our house flooded uh, a year ago. So it's just been a. Uh, it's been a trip. It's been a lot of suffering, a lot of hard days, and a lot of learning. And uh, we're somehow still making it happen. I'm thankful for that. Not as many shows as we had a couple years ago, but it's it's kind of coming back. But not going to paint a picture that leads you to think it's all been. Yeah, we're great. We're like untouched by all this. No, it's been it's been really hard. A lot of people think that being in the music business, like what you see on stage, is wow, what a life, right? And it's, it's really not that. There's so much stuff behind the scenes that happens, whether it's, you know, writing songs or just managing family and everything else. And, and you know, you've had a lot of stuff happening. It's, I think it's amusing. I shouldn't say it this way, but it's amusing that your your current song, I'm Not Lucky, I'm Blessed, you recorded that a week before your house flooded. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, yep. 
<laughs> I mean, this is the way it goes. We write these songs uh, and it ends up being really needed uh, an anthem in our own lives, right? So I know it's, it's a lot of learning what blessing is. It's really easy to say, like, I'm blessed when life is going the way you thought it would and the picture in your head is being lived out. It's a whole different thing when it feels like you're going backwards, going down instead of up. But I mean, Jesus showed us how to um, go down to go up. And uh, that's not the message we love hearing, you know, <laughs> but, but that's really um, what Jesus models for us. So it's been hard, but Jesus identifies with grief and there's space for us to be there. Yeah, it's funny because uh, Aisha and I were chatting a couple of weeks ago just about stuff in life, and and we all go through stuff. Like, everybody has tragedies that happen in their lives and stuff. And, you know, I was complaining to her about a couple of things. Well, first of all, my cell phone died, and I had to, you know, you know, the battery died, and, and I just had to kind of replace the thing. And so there's a bunch of money you got to fork over. And then the battery died in my car. And so now you got to fork over more money and stuff. And you can kind of look at the situation and think, my life really sucks right now. Where am I going to get the cash? Or just look at the positive side. So, you know, my car battery died. Well, um, now I've got a new battery and it's probably good for a few years. So I don't have to worry about that anymore. How's that? You know, trying to be optimistic, <laughs> trying to sound excited here. Um, yes. Had to get a new cell phone. Well, now I got a new cell phone. It's going to be good for a few years, right? I don't have to spend that kind of money again, right? So again, trying sure, to be optimistic absolutely. and positive, but it's, it's you know, sometimes difficult. But uh, <laughs> yeah, totally. And I think growing up in church, there, there can sometimes be like a toxic positivity um, where we feel that, Faith equals positivity. You know, heaven forbid I be honest and truthful about how my life's really going. Is that a reflection on a lack of faith? Is that a reflection on bad decisions? Like, actually, no, this is part of being human. And we don't become Christians and stop being human. And nowhere in, in Scripture do I read about having to be, you know, fake positive. You know, joy is always mingled with pain. It's always, I mean... All these Easter hymns we sing and talk about that, you know, joy and love come mingled down. It's always both of those things. It's not either or. And so I hear you. There's those times where you're like, I have to choose a positive mindset. Heck yeah, I got a brand new cell phone. And then there's those times where you're like, wow, I'm in a really hard season and being positive or forcing myself to be is so draining. Why am I doing this? Jesus doesn't require me to be anywhere but where I am. Jody, are your kids musically inclined? They really like to hit things. Um, hit things? Did you say uh, hit things? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, uh, we have a drum kit that um, unfortunately got flooded when our house flooded, but that's what they begged to have back. Um, and they air guitar a ton. They sing a lot. So I don't know. We'll see. Neither one of like Chris or I have really taken a lead on being like, okay, let's do lessons and I'm going to teach you, but yes, right. they, they definitely perform for us every single day. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Can they, can they keep a tune though? Can they sing? Do they, do they have that ability? Oh yeah. Okay. So you, you, you know, whether they pick up an instrument or they sing or they just become that sound guy, they can be your sound guy when you're traveling. As they get older, you, you do realize that's your crew, right? <laughs> that's what Chris says. He's like, they can carry things now. This is awesome. Before I was just carrying them everywhere. <laughs> right. That is so funny. That's good. What's it like um, traveling with your kids? Because if, you know, you've got a young family um, and you're trying to juggle around life, um, and, and then school as well. What's it like if you, you know, have to travel as a couple and as a family to do some shows? Yeah, it's, um, it's good, bad, and everything in between, but mostly good. Uh, it's very humbling because, you know, if, if a kid decides to throw a fit over something, I'm parenting in public, and it's really tempting to try and make him behave in a way that makes us look good. <laughs> yeah, but that's also draining. Uh, and same with married life in public. It's just we're sort of just living our life, and hopefully, by things not always going right, it reminds others like, "Hey, you have permission for just to be you and to let your kid be a human being." You know, we don't need to apologize for our kids being messy or our kids being kids. You know, but that's easier said than done when the kids at the front of the church and you've flown up to LA it's the time change and they're exhausted and 
the pastor's thanking you for a great show, and you look over, and, you know, my three-year-old speaking over at a front of the church, and you're just like, get me out of here. <laughs> yeah. How old, are, how old are your kids now? Uh, Milo just turned six, and Biggie's 18 months younger. I thought they were older than that for some reason. How old are your kids, Aisha? Ours are 10, 8, 5, and a year and a half. Oh, okay, so you're right in that same bracket as uh, as Jody and Chris. My kids are, uh, my daughter's 18 and my son is 20, 21, I think it's 21. I think it's twenty. I think it's twenty one next month. So and and I I always say you know once they're out of diapers, once they can feed themselves, dress themselves, right. um, you're good to go, right? So you're you're in that perfect age right now. Now you just have to deal with their personalities. <laughs> That's a fun way of saying right. all the stuff that goes that goes on, right? Oh man, yeah, for sure. Like starting kindergarten, the whole we all started kindergarten. You know, it's. <laughs> It's such an adjustment, and uh, yeah, they're not little robots that just do what you tell them to do, and um, it's beautiful. My kids are my biggest teachers. Yeah. Yeah, that's um, true. That That is so true, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. If we're open to it, it's funny. At, at first, I think you, like you said, you're feeding them and keeping them alive, but then it reaches that point where you're like, oh, wow, we can do this together. I can learn from you. You can learn from me. Sure enough. And that's cool to be in that spot. It's interesting as they get older how you start having more serious adult conversations. And it's just like, I, but, but you were just a kid. <laughs> exactly. Isn't that so true? The things they say, it's just beautiful. Like Milo is quieter. And he said to me yesterday, we were at a new playground and we were swinging. And he's like, you know, Mom, you know what I like to do? Like, I don't know anyone. And I'm at the playground. I just swing and talk to people. It usually works. I meet someone. I'm like, that's great. I should do that. I'm just going to swing and meet people, too. <laughs> <laughs> now, you're with uh, Curb. Yes. Do you guys uh, ever see yourself? I don't know that you ever have, but do you uh, see yourselves do any kind of, doing any kind of collaboration with other Curb artists? Oh, it would be awesome. I mean, we sometimes get to tour together, which is fun, but we have different booking agents, so that doesn't always work. Right. But yeah, I would love it. And who would who would it be? Like, who would you want to collaborate with? Oh man, well we have collaborated with um, Francesca. We did we co-wrote the song Gates on our second record, and then we did an acoustic performance together, um, which was really fun. She's a good friend, so that's been awesome. And then Natalie Grant and I um, go to the same church, and we're good pals, so we we worship together, which is fun. Um, Blanca is a good friend as well. That would be a blast. We've never done anything together. Uh, when we signed our record deal for King and Country, it was just uh, Joel and Luke. Yeah, they weren't even for King and Country yet. So, um, hey, that'd be fun too. Uh, you know, with your style of music and and the artists that you've described, personally speaking, Aisha, you can you know you can jump in, but but I think uh, a great collab with you guys would be either for King and Country or Blanca. Those would be awesome. Like it's just that right style of music that you guys could jump right in. You're you're hitting the drum, uh, Jody, like like you know the boys I do. Love that. Yeah, <laughs> like it's the same sort of style, right? And for Blanca, I mean, she's got that dance thing happening. You know, that's so true. That'd be such a blast. Yeah, or or all three of you guys, right? Blanca for King and Country and Loving the Outcome. Wouldn't that be awesome? Let's do it. Oh man. Okay. Let's do it. Let's see what we can. You know, we can pull some strings for you. That, okay, that means thanks. that means absolutely nothing, of course. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you gotta float it out Blanca's there sometimes, down here, right? She? Where's Blanca? Is she out in uh, in Florida? She's in Florida, I believe. Yeah, she is. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. It's okay. You got to do a trip to Nashville, and and uh, and I got to do a trip to Nashville. I'll just be the sound guy, or I'll just watch. I, I'm just happy watching, <laughs> drinking my coffee. <laughs> hey, that's a nice place to be. Yeah, yeah. No, no responsibility, <laughs> right? <laughs> I guess that's true. I'll, I'll join you on the coffee, uh, my friend. Sounds good. <laughs> Jody, do you guys do any uh, touring in Canada? I know that that's where you're from. Yeah. Oh, man. It's been hard to get across the border for the last couple of years. Uh, so wow. we've actually had to push two tours um, that were fully planned. But we're rescheduling it for this fall, which we haven't announced it publicly or anything. I guess I kind of just did. But, uh, you heard, you heard it here first, matter. folks. <laughs> <laughs> I can't keep a secret to save my life. 
But uh, yeah, October we'll get we'll get across to Canada and probably spend the whole month there. Oh, that's awesome. Nice. How's that going to impact your kids though? They're in school. Our schools here, I don't know if it's a national thing or what, um, but they're really good about just giving me what I need to sort of keep up for the days they miss. Okay. So it works out okay. Do they get homework when they travel with you though? They do. I mean, being only kindergarten, I guess grade one at that point, it's, they're young enough that they get sort of quote unquote homework, but it's sure. really just like, hey, get to it if you can. Yeah. When when my kids were young, we did some traveling, just vacations and stuff. I remember we did a uh, one of these cruises and it was a couple of weeks and they missed school because of it. But they were in the younger grades, so we could have, we could afford to do something like that as far as their time. Yeah. Uh, now that they're older, it, it's it's more difficult. So, you know, relish those times that you have, because in 10 years from now, it'll be more difficult doing that. They might just want to hang back with their friends anyways. And, and then you and Chris go off. In fact, that might be a good romantic getaway for you. <laughs> I know. I'm like, hey, wait a second. That sounds really good. Well, listen, Jody. thanks so much for uh, hanging with Aisha and uh, and the rest of our listeners. Thank you so much for just wanting to chat and for the great questions and the good hang. And I wish it was in person, but yeah, wouldn't that we'll, be nice? We'll take what we can get. Yeah. Aisha and I were talking about, you know, maybe one of these days we we just hang around a coffee shop in Nashville and just see who shows up. Hey, if there's coffee involved and you guys being so kind and fun to talk to, I think you can't go wrong. (laughs) There you go. There you go. (laughs) We got a plan on it. Seriously, we got a plan to do this. Wow. So that was a great conversation with Jody from Love and the Outcome. Good people. She good people. So, she good people. That's, that's yeah. definitely a southern thing, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, she's good people. <laughs> Listen, if you want to learn more about what those guys have going on, their ministry, their tour dates, and all their socials, you can find Love and the Outcome at loveintheoutcome.com. All things love and the outcome. All Go things love and the outcome, yeah. <laughs> and of love course, and the outcome. She she did allude to the fact that, uh, you know, the secret that nobody else knows about yet because she can't keep secrets about the fact that they've got a tour going to hap- uh, start happening, I guess, uh, October in Canada is, is what I was thinking. So that's something to look forward that's to exciting. for Canadian friends. Yeah. And uh, and of course, their new album. Check it out. It's called Only Ever Always. It dropped at the beginning of April, and uh, you need to check that out as well. And Aisha, we have artist advice this week coming from Tim Timmons. Tim Timmons. You know what? That reminds me. Some years back, we had a writing session with Tim Timmons. And to tell you the truth, I don't even remember what came of the song that we started. (laughs) Oh, it never got recorded? Is that what you're saying? (laughs) Nope. Oh, okay. (laughs) But that happens, right? That happens when you're writing stuff. You know, you have all these ideas churning around and stuff, and sometimes it materializes into a song, and other times it doesn't, right? Right. I may have to go digging and and see what we can make of it. Yeah. Revisit, right? Mm Mm-hmm. There you go. Well, let's go to Tim now for some artist advice. I'm going to put a hyphen on it. Um, Work your butt off, but... uh, uh, Oh, gosh, well... I'm trying to think of there's so many thoughts I have, uh, but I, yeah, it's, it's work hard at what you do and um, ask Jesus what he wants. You know, I, we just, we're all, we're so quick to say, you know, here's, here's what I want, God. I want you to do this. It's like, Jesus, what do you want? And how do I join you in that? So that, that's what I get most. I think it's the best thing for artists to say. Tim Timmons on Between the Grooves, work hard. What does Jesus want? Some wise words from an established artist. What do you think, Aisha? Oh, man. You know what? You got to, in this thing, you got to keep your grind. Yeah. Any career for that matter, but especially in the music business and especially over the last couple of years. You know, it's so easy to give up. It's so easy to say, forget this whole thing. I'm moving on, right? Right, right. Easy to throw in the towel, but you got to remember that in the big scheme of things, it's really not about us yeah that's right well there's the music which means we are out of time thanks to jody from love and the outcome for hanging with us and uh, don't forget to follow us on twitter and facebook at between grooves and uh, leave us a comment any questions you might have we always love hearing from you as well thanks for tuning in yeah it's been great i'm looking forward to the next one